This is the Puma Liberate Nitro. It's a stripped down speed shoe with nothing but Puma's brand new Nitro foam. And it gives us a perfect chance to see exactly what this foam is made of. So let's take the Puma Liberate Nitro out for a midweek long run workout and put it to the test. Thirteen point nine zero miles, seven minutes, twenty six seconds per mile, one hundred fifty five beats per minute today. Taking the Puma Liberate Nitro out for a first run. Today's workout included a two mile warm up, ten miles at marathon effort, followed by four strides and then a one mile cool down. A perfect chance to test out what this stripped down speed shoe from Puma has to offer. And before I give you my thoughts on this shoe, I do wanna go over some disclosures. This is a shoe that I purchased myself. No one sent it to me. No one's paying me to make this video. And no one's gonna get a chance to preview any of my footage or my thoughts before you guys get a chance to see this video on YouTube. Now, with that disclosure out of the way, let's talk about the Puma Liberate Nitro. First, let's go over some specs. Now, some of the specs on this are a little bit uh, uncertain. Start off with the stack height. I believe the stack height is 28 millimeters in height, although that's coming from Road Trail Run. They're also reporting that the shoe has a 10 millimeter drop, which would give us 18 millimeters of stack height in the forefoot. Only problem with that is I believe Puma is stating that it's an eight millimeter drop shoe, but that 28 millimeter number and 18 to 20 millimeters of stack height in the forefoot feels about right, ultimately, no matter what the actual numbers are, it does have a pretty significant drop and it does have a very low amount of stack height. As far as what that stack height is made out of, it's only Puma's Nitro Foam. Now, in the DV8 Nitro earlier this year, we saw the Nitro Foam paired with a TPU heel counter and a carbon fiber plate in an everyday trainer. There's also a daily trainer that Puma released this year that has the Nitro Foam plus uh, I believe an EVA foam that also goes along with it. This shoe has only nitro foam in it and that's why I found it so fascinating and why I wanted it to be the next Puma shoe that I tried from their totally revamped running shoe lineup for 2021. On the outsole, we've got Puma Grip and there is a big area of exposed foam in the middle. Up top, we have a mono mesh upper, which is see-through in most places. And there's just very little structure. There's very little of anything in this shoe. There's that outer mono mesh layer. And then there's the tongue, which looks like it's pulled straight off of a Puma soccer cleat. And that's gusseted. And that gusset actually becomes part of like, almost like a booty that encompasses the entire toe box area. Then there's also additional kind of elastic type supports on each side of the foot right around where the arches would be. And then around back, there's no structure in this heel at all. It's super, super floppy. The only thing we've got back here is a little bit of a softer material right here on the parts that might actually be touching your ankle bone. And there are a couple of bumper pads to help keep this foot locked in place. Other than that, there's not really a lot going on in this shoe. And this entire package comes in at a very lightweight, 6.3 ounces or 179 grams. So what was it like to run it in this Nitro Foam and what is that Nitro Foam really like? I will say that in the amount that they're using in this shoe, the Nitro Foam is extremely squishy, surprisingly squishy. It's not usually a sensation that I tend to, uh, to think about when I'm thinking about Nitro based foams, uh, but it just definitely has a squishiness to it but there is a limit to it. I feel like there's not a ton of it there. It's intentionally designed to be a very low stack height shoe. And I feel like it's bottoming out and you're definitely getting a lot of road feel. Puma itself says that this is going to be a speed shoe designed for anything up to about a half marathon. I ran a little bit longer than a half marathon for today. The work phase of my workout was about 10, 10 and a half miles for today. And that definitely was pushing it in terms of my comfort level in this shoe, just because there's not a lot underfoot. I'd say that this is probably like, 
there's like kind of two competing sensations going on at the same time when I'm running in the Liberate Nitro. On the one hand, I'm feeling like I'm getting a really spongy but springy sensation from that Nitro Foam. Like all the goodness of Nitro Foams, I'm getting it. But I'm also bottoming out and feeling like I'm running directly on the paved surfaces that I was running on today. It's almost like race flat thin. That's kind of the sensation that I'm getting from it. Once I was into the work phase for the workout for today, it was very easy to get up to that marathon effort that I was looking for for the run today, which was the bulk of the run. So not a super intense workout, but an extended uh, period of work, 70 minutes uh, of working at that marathon effort. And uh, it definitely felt good to run in that the shoe is just ultra light. And I felt like as I was starting to get tired, uh, it was very easy to maintain really good form, get a really good butt kick, getting that claw back with the hamstring and making sure that those feet weren't dragging, that I wasn't dragging my feet through the gait cycle. I felt like I was really able to make sure that things were turning over in a very snappy way. A lot of that was from like the springiness of that nitro foam, but I also think some of the lightness of the shoe had a lot to do with it as well. I will say though that the shoe is extremely floppy. So if you're landing a little bit on the outside of your foot, you're gonna feel a little bit of that twisting, some of that torsion. If you're landing a little bit on the inside of your foot, you're gonna feel a lot of that kind of crashing in. There's just not a lot here to help kind of correct or uh, insulate you. So I did feel like there was a portion of time in the middle of the run while I was still kind of like getting used to like the running dynamics of this particular shoe where I felt like my the arches of my feet were getting a little bit tired because I felt like they were trying to work a little bit harder uh, and trying to make, my, make sure I was kind of like balancing myself for the errors uh, and the fatigue that I was feeling in terms of how my foot was striking the ground. Now, for a lot of you, that might be a fantastic thing in terms of like, that's the way that you can teach your body how to become more efficient, how to become a better and stronger runner. But for someone like me that usually for longer runs likes to run in something that's a very high stack height shoe, it was definitely a change of, I guess, pace, no pun intended on that one. Uh, so it felt very different for me and it felt like I was running in a completely different type of running experience. Now I would say that for me, I started to really feel like I wished that I had more foam underfoot, probably at about like seven or eight miles into the run. Now I would be the first one to admit that I do not have the toughest of feet. My feet are not the strongest out there. So I generally do like to have a lot more cushion underfoot. And for me, probably earlier than most, I was feeling like the foam that's available in the forefoot of this shoe just really wasn't enough to make it a long distance shoe. But the trade-off for that kind of discomfort at the longer distance was the fact that it was very easy and very pleasant and exciting to be able to run faster in this shoe. I definitely felt like I was getting that like nitro feel if you run in another nitro foam, such as like the Hyperion Tempo or the Hyperion Elite, you're running in nitro foams and you're getting up to speed in those shoes. That's kind of like that same sensation I was getting, but I was able to get it kind of a lot easier with this shoe. And I'm thinking a lot of that has to come down to the fact that there was just less of it in the forefoot. And it just felt like kind of a much springier composition of nitro foam. Now that could also have something to do not only with the stack head itself, but in just in the way that they're making that foam. But I just felt like I had all the benefits of nitro foam without having to like really make sure I was digging deep and pushing off very hard, which tends to be kind of like the one drawback of nitro foams is that at slower paces, it tends to feel a little bit firm. This shoe doesn't have that problem at all speeds. It tends to be very springy and bouncy, but it has its limit because I do feel like it bottoms out relatively easily. What helped make this shoe a lot easier to live with, at least for the longer run for today, was the fact that this upper is just absolutely fantastic. I love it. There isn't a thing that I would change about this upper. I tend to really enjoy shoes that are very floppy in the heel and that don't have a lot of padding. Um, and that's exactly what this shoe delivers for me. The fit feels great, felt snug, not only at marathon effort, but also when I was doing strides, when I was trying to move a lot faster, pick up the pace even 
quicker. Uh, I felt like this shoe stayed on really well. I didn't really even notice the bumper pads on here. So there wasn't any slipping or sliding around in this ankle or in this heel area. Everything just locked down really nice and tight. And in the forefoot, I was really thinking that given how kind of firm it is up front because there isn't a lot of stack height in this shoe, I was really thinking that towards the end of my run today, I was gonna just be dying in the toes. I just felt like I was really gonna be taking a beating there. But my feet felt great for the entire run, at least in terms of how much space my feet had in this shoe, while also still feeling secure enough that I could bring this shoe up to speed and keep it at a sustained level of effort for a very, very long time. So super impressed with the upper that's in this shoe. Really absolutely nailed it with this one. It just fits fantastic and it's super light. It just feels really great to be able to run in the upper of the shoe. The Puma Grip, I have experience with this Puma Grip compound in the DV8 Nitro. It works really well there. It also works really well in this shoe as well. Felt very grippy in this shoe. No complaints really whatsoever in terms of the rubber covers that's in this shoe. So I think that this shoe is ideal for speed workout. The faster, the better. Bring it to the track if you're doing like a hard workout on a treadmill. If you're doing shorter intervals that are on the road, I think this is a fantastic shoe to work with. I ran with it at marathon effort for today. I think it does really well there. It likes that speed. But I think that the ideal way that I would want to use this shoe is on a workout day that's going to be probably shorter than half marathon distance, maybe in that like 10 miles or less distance for your workouts. So for example, like a threshold workouts or faster, that's where I think that this shoe is really going to shine and you're not going to feel too beat up afterwards in terms of how your feet and the rest of your body is feeling because of the impact that your body is going to have to absorb because there isn't as much cushion underfoot. Another way of looking at it is I was able to complete the workout for today, but I feel like in terms of recovering from this workout and getting to complete the rest of my runs for this week and getting ready for my weekend long run, I feel like I did get the benefit in terms of like the muscle benefit of the workout, but I feel like my body's taking a little bit more of a beating than it normally would for my Wednesday run. So that's something that I would take into consideration before deciding is this a shoe that I want to run in for this particular day. But because it's so light and because it's so great at those faster distances, I totally think that this could be used as a race flat. The Nitro Foam in the Liberate has a springiness to it that I feel like is really exciting and amazing how much spring it can give you when there's so little of it underfoot. So definitely something that I would highly consider for a 5K time trial or even a 5K road race. I think it would be fantastic in those kinds of situations as well. So. A fantastic shoe, but it has like its own set of like use cases that's a little bit different than say your daily trainers. It's not a shoe that I'd want to run in every day, but for those faster, shorter workouts, this is a really good one. And it's only 110 bucks. So pretty impressed with this shoe. Looking forward to some fast workouts on this shoe. I might have to bring it up to the track and see how it feels on a bouncy surface like a track. So that will be a lot of fun. I can't wait to do that hit the subscribe button so you can see that workout and so you can see videos as I start comparing this shoe to some other speed shoes that I have in my rotation. If you have any questions about this shoe, feel free to put them in the comments down below or better yet, feel free to stop by the live stream that I do just about every day on YouTube. I'd love to be able to interact with you live. That's all I have for today, everybody. Thanks so much for making it all the way to the end of the video. Hopefully you guys are staying safe out there on your runs and I'll see you in the next one. Yo, what's going on?